was the key word, shackle, ransom, and soul, shackle, ransom, and soul. There was the blue book, the Old Testament, and then there was the Adam Clark. No, scroll down. There was the Adam Clark one. The one by Adam Clark, the 1825 one. Yeah. There was that one, and then there was the Old Testament, the other one that they put the blue cover on. And, um, some of those old annotated Bible, I like that one. That was one of the older ones where the Protestant Christians or the English Christians, they were doing a lot of uh, looking into the Hebrew and trying to correct their translation based on what the Hebrew and the Greek actually said. It was, it was a moment of, of great uh, diligence as far as, um, as, far as uh, Bible, I mean, say Bible studies. Bible studies went. That's so when the the Ethiopian youth or the individual for God said something about the Nazi Bible not being is not, not Protestant or some are Protestant and Pentecostal. A lot of Ethiopians I notice don't really understand what's what. You know, I mean not just Ethiopia, I think Africans, I think um like I said before that all Africans are indebted whether they want to admit it or not. Or Africans and black people around the world and other people too, for a lot of their humanity too, the black people of America and the Caribbean, the, the once lost but now found date to Israel, the Falash of the West, what we call Ethiopian Hebrews, they're indebted to us in many ways. Right now you see this revolution or protest in the Arab world where they are talking about their humanity. It's like they discovered their humanity. They want to be treated like a human being and so forth and so on. And it's interesting, it's only because that they're able to get other sides of the story, and also because of black culture, even in its suppressed and suppressed way, they're able to pick up bits and pieces of black culture and see the struggles, mainly our struggles, over here, whether it's um, MLK, Martin Luther King, whether it's you know, one side of the track or the other, you know, like from the peaceful protests of Martin Luther King and the civil rights is to the more um, to the more so-called extremists of the nation of Islam and to the various other struggles of black people in America and the issues that we've been dealing with as we take the take on um, the Gentiles or white supremacy head on even in this newer forms there is still a very potent um, brand of white supremacy which has it's like the new clan. You remember when they said the clan developed into the Ku Klux Klan developed into a new clan. They couldn't do it like Hitler did by virtue of race. They had to that failed. That failed during the time of his Imperial Majesty. And they've been trying to find a new fit and this is what we have today in the present um you know world system where there's a lot of black people who are front people actually for um for the Gentile agenda. I'm not talking about the issues the Gentiles speak about, but actually are really, really in bed. And we're not just talking about politicians, you know, the politicians are easy to identify. We're talking about a lot of the regular, so-called regular, um, the regular folk, the so-called regular folk, um, the meat and potato, so-called Americans. But this particular study that I was seeking to do on, um, is dealing with this particular sabbatical, the Sabbath, the Senbet Hayaan, or the 21st um, Sabbath, um, which is called Ki Thessa. And we had called it Ket Al Hacho Gizeh, but it'll probably be more in tune with what the good is says. Um, the good is says, I think, uh, what is it? La Emma. Is it La Emma? The Emma Nesaika, the Emma Nesaika, which Bamarinya would be Tekabel, 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 like one says, when you, when you shall receive, when you shall take, when you shall take, and that's speaking to the first words of the sabbatical um, reading for the 21st year, La Emma Nesaika, and Tekabel. Uh, to 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 actually to Kevle, when you shall take the sum the kuta of the Israel the Jews take the sum of the number of Israel, and it has some interesting points. That I think a lot of people, a lot.
lot of us without any further instruction or any study on our own may not really understand the context of it. Yobas Hemwin talks about all the males of 20 years and up that they are to give a a a uh, half a shekel for the for the rede- redemption or really ransom the ransom money and as I went through the first part of it I kind of just went to one of the main points and that's connecting the marijuana or the herb or the cannabosum to the 30th chapter of 30th chapter of Exodus. This is what we find and what we had talked about in the Kanabosim and the marijuana conspiracy and some of the other videos that we had did. We briefly touched on it when we were speaking of the sweet, the sweet incense and the altar of incense and the significance of Christ in the altar of incense. This is probably one of the most important areas of scripture, especially like the five books of Moses. Because once ones have a good groundation with that, a lot of other things in, in true Christina true Christianity or the messianic work of the son of the ba- the Bain Ha Elohim, the son of God, would become much more understandable. But there's a couple terminologies that we need to understand, like uh, ransom. Ransom. And here in this particular crudence, complete concordance, which is basically to look up certain words or phrases, basically certain key words where they're found in, in the scripture um, they have some in some places a little more like information but here under ransom as a substantive um, Bamarinya will be the Beza the Beza here it has a price paid for freedom that ransom is actually a price paid for freedom and the first time that this word appears in scripture is actually in the 21st chapter of um, 21st chapter of Exodus and it occurs again in the 30th chapter of Exodus so we're dealing with the second time that it occurred in this particular sabbatical um, sabbatical reading and feeding in this particular Sabbath study so ransom I thought this was a good a good a good summary you understand to teach our people who might not be familiar with it when it's speaking about the ransom that every man a ransom would give a ransom for his soul, for his soul and that would be half a shackle. But every male who is 20 years, who is 20 years, I believe 20 years and up. So 20, this is what we get in the West, the Western, in the Western world, that one is a man around the age of 20, 21. That in our Hebrew, Hebraic way of life, we find that this is from the Torah, from the living Torah, the Ori. And we find it here in chapter 30 of Exodus, where it speaks about a ransom, half a shekel, half a shekel or a shekel for his soul. And what is a ransom? What is this ransom? A ransom is a price paid for freedom. Now, I point that out because one should distinguish ransom from redeem, as we will touch on the subject matter of redemption. Because redeem now means to buy again something that has been sold by paying back the price to him that bought it. Leviticus 25, 25, Leviticus 27, 20. Secondly, is to deliver and bring out of bondage or slavery those who were kept prisoners by their enemies. Like um, Dagmawi Minulik was said to have done when he sent a shipload of gold for the black people in the West, the Ethiopian, the Hebrews over here in the West, who he identified as Ethiopians and as and as Israelites, which is another very important point that has been um, suppressed and, and needs to be brought to light. Now, Deuteronomy 7 and 5, 32 and 6, Luke 1 and 68, 1 Timothy 2 and 6, Titus 2 and 14. Now, to redeem the time is found in Ephesians 5 and 16, interpretation is to embrace and improve every opportunity to embrace and to improve every opportunity of doing good so if we're redeeming the time we're embracing and improving every opportunity of doing good so ransom what we want to touch on just briefly as well we want to get that download is ransom understanding ransom going over some of the older 
the older um, biblical commentaries that are out there. And some of them are pretty, are quite good, especially if you are going to study it. You're saying you're not just going to believe everything, accept everything, but really study it. And, and some of these writers who are not really famous or well known, these are individuals that spend their time researching it and studying it, probably for their own desire or if they were, you know, commissioned by somebody. However, a lot of this research is not really what even in churches we're just told. That's what we said the Google Books, we give it a double thumbs up, especially the free books that are still available and hopefully we'll be able to compose certain lists and have certain available books for those who, you know, desire to, to get beyond behind the so called versions or the King James version of the Bible. Now, ransom simply put ransom since that's one of the main um ideas of this sabbatical 21st sabbatical um study is a price that's paid for freedom i thought that was a very very important a, a very important idea that ransom see a lot of folks like i just said mistake or confuse ransom for re redemption just because they both begin with an R, and that needs to be clarified in one's hearts and minds, that's why the Holy Spirit said touch on ransom and redemption, just one one more part right here that we want to touch on, this is shekel, this is just from the concordance, you know, just looking in the concordance and see what, seeing what this concordance had in it, because some words they define a little bit, that was a one liner right there, but a very important one liner that a ransom is a a price paid for freedom that all the males, all the males of Israel who are 20 years and up, or who are 20 years, or upon reaching 20 years, paid a half a shekel. Now, what is a shekel? We said in the in the uh, other pod and other teaching that we did briefly, passing over the subject matter, that a shekel is a silver-based currency, usually silver-based currency in Israel, which is the equivalent um, of, which is the equivalent of, of a bur, bur, like in Ethiopia, the bur, right? And it's interesting that Ethiopia is one of these few um, ancient cultures and societies that still use a very Judeo-Christian, a very uh, Hebraic basis for its economy for its economy, and this is important, the economy and the finances, very important issues, economics, and people didn't know that the Bible also addresses economics, and a lot of practices that are the better and the good practices that are utilized in the West and have been adopted in other places in the world, actually originate and emanate out of the Bible, basically, you know, they come from the Bible, now the shekel of the sekel, as we say in his Imperial Majesty's Targum or translation or interpretation is the unit of weight and of money among the Judahites or among the Hebrews. In other words, so the shekel, the shekel is the unit of weight and of money among the Hebrews. It weighed about a half an ounce and as coined in silver was worth about two shillings and nine pence or 65 cents now there's another um there's another note that we have from adam clark that particular book that we're, we're seeking to download from the google books where in his note from an 1825 uh, bible commentary um he says i think something like two shillings like three shillings or something three shillings i think six pence here they have two shillings and nine pence. This is more more closer to our time, this prudence concordance, or 65 cents. So what we have to now com computate is in today's money, what will a shackle, first of all, is the weight, because it basically says, as we go on, that um, a shackle, a shackle is... Uh, a certain number of geras, which are all um, weights and measures. So what we're going to learn is the proper Hebraic weights and measures, and we have to adopt these weights and measures in our commonwealth. So the first thing we have to do is learn about these weights and measures in our commonwealth. Now in gold, 
one or two pounds or 4.85 to 9.69 dollars according to the period so depends on if we're talking about silver or if we're speaking about um, gold now in the scripture just to remind ones where we are addressing understand the society and this is all study this is how we become civilized this is true sultane you understand without without the covenant and without the teaching of his majesty we're uncivilized you know what i mean we may have good intention like certain animals i mean i mean mother bears and, and you know other kind of creatures they they have affection for their own but you know they, they're not going to sit down and, and dialogue or build you know build a house or a city or nothing like that you understand, and they're not mad. So, verse 13, it says right here, it says, um, Oh, this is my will of Memphis, Caduce, how do I'm not just hear this again? It says, from verse 11, it says, Exiabihurim, Musain, and D below Tanakaro. And the Lord, and Yod, Hey, Wow, Hey, Yahweh, Jah, if you please, spake to Musay, saying, Ante, Yes, Rylan, Lejocha, Kutera, Tekeble. Now the Targum, King James says, When thou takest the sum of the children of Israel after their number, then shall they give every man a ransom for his soul to yod hey wow hey yahweh ja if you please when thou numberest them that there be no plague that there be no plague among them when thou numberest that there be no plague amongst them when thou numberest them because you remember that there's, a, there's the whole matter about taking a census. You know, taking a census among the Beta Israel. Mm. Now, Adam Clark had an interesting, we'll get to this, Adam Clark had an interesting um, commentary. Adam Clark had an interesting commentary. I'm just looking at this Hebrew right here. But it might have an interesting footnote right here. Probably do. Um, let's see. Verse 11. Verse 11. Uh, this is from Ki Tissa or Ki Thessa. Ki Thessa. Interesting when you get to the root of it. Because then Hark says, uh, Imme um, Nesaika. But the root word is Nesa. Nesa'a, you understand? So both of them, ki tesa, te, te, nesa, nesa'a. You know what I mean? So you can see the Hebrew and the good is, she is, she is a lot um, in common. Now, we have Shekel, Moses as Israel's ruler, he introduced this coin, which derived its name from the fact that it was made of pure metal and was full of weight. Or sekel, it was full of, it was it was full of weight. Now we learn of the of the shekel of the sanctuary, which is the full standard shekel as ordained to be used in connection with all sacred purposes, all sacred, all holy purposes. Now the shekel is equivalent to the Ethiopian bur, or, or we could say like the roughly the one dollar bur. You understand? the Ethiopian bur. Now, it says right here as we go to the next verse, uh, verse uh, 13, Asra Source, it says, Alpho Yemi Quet Er Hulu, Gemasha Sekel, Indamek Desu, Sekel, Mizan Yseta, Yesekel, 
Gamash Le Exiabihir Yanessa. This they shall give everyone that passeth among them that are numbered half a shekel after the shekel of the sanctuary or in the Mekadesu Sekel. Um, a shekel in, in brackets, parentheses here in the King James, and this is not contained by Marinya, but it's contained in the King James um, to explain in the bracket says a shekel is 20 geras, is 20 geras. Now, the Jewish, um, the Jewish uh, Homesh, or the five books, says that the gera is a kind of coin. And some say it's identical with an agora in 1 Samuel 2 and 36. Now, it's important right here because there's a half shekel shall be, off, be the offering, shall be the offering to the Lord. Now, it doesn't say offering by Marinya, which is interesting right here. It doesn't say offering, but basically says it shall be given to Egeziavi her lotus upon. It shall be given to Yahweh, Elohe Israel Baruchu. Now, it goes on to say that everyone that passeth among them that are numbered, Seklu Haya O Bolino Alfoa Yete Quetere Hulu Kahaya Ometa Jamro Kaziama Kafiale Yegziabiherin Sitot Ai Setal. Everyone that passeth among them that are numbered from twenty years old and above shall give an offering to the Lord, shall give a gift actually, Sitota. Now, the Seklu Haya Oboli, the Oboli, it would be the you see at the Oboli, they have Geras here. Then the Jewish footnote says Agora. Now we have Oboli. We can see the, the link in different mouths, how different languages come from one root, but spoken differently among different people. Now the verse 15 is now going to add something additional, as 14 did with the 20 years. It gives the Kahaya Ahmet Jemro, which is interesting because there's a certain age for priests. There's a certain age for priests with a certain maturity. So once we begin to um, re-civilize ourselves or return, really, it's a return to the, the fullness of our civilization, which is the Kalakidan and which is the teachings of his imperial majesty in the illumination and the light of his Christ, then we will really be able to organize our society again. See, this, see, this is the basic foundation. This is why when one's look at the so-called Jews out in the Middle East and say, wow, how was their society able to, to grow in some of the leaps and bounds? Not because everything that they do is completely right, but because a basic foundation is scriptural, biblical, so it has a structure, even if it's just mechanical. We're not saying in the spirit and truth of it, but they look at a system, if it works, they put it into effect. You understand? And they are not even the ethnic people as we are. So this is one of the things we need to consider. This is why Yahweh said that he would make us, um, he would provoke us among a people that are no people so that we can return hopefully to our senses. But check this part right here out where it says that, Let nefsachu mas tes reya yegziavi herin sit ota sit setu bale tegau kasek la gemash ay chemer. The rich shall not give more and the poor shall not give less than half a shekel. So that means it was an affordable amount. When they give an offering or a gift, sitota, you understand, to, to the sustainer, to make an atonement, to make a what? A mas tes reya, an atonement for your souls. Verse 16, yeah, mas tes reyawu nema genze, ka israeli jocha weste, le megenanyao, dinkwan, ma gela geya, tader gewale, beg ziavi hurim fita le nefsachu, beza in dihon, le israeli jocha metasebia, yuhun, and they shall shalt take the atonement money of the children of Israel and shall appoint it for the what? 
for the service of the tabernacle of the congregation le megananya dinquan magel gaya tadar gawale that it may be a memorial metasebia for the children of israel before yahweh or before say before his face because the abirum feet to make an atonement to make an atonement for your souls for your souls so this part right here was very very interesting because when thou takest the sum that's how it begins when thou takest the sum when thou takest the sum in verse 12 when thou takest the sum this does not mean that the census was optional as Moses had been commanded to number Israel what the words convey in the note right here and keep this up it says is when Moses undertook to count them they should each give a half shekel and by counting the coins he would arrive at the total number one rebi the 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 the, the rambam came to that conclusion now as musa gathered the people together to enjoin upon them to donate gifts to don't donate sitota gifts for the building of the mekdes he sees the opportunity to take a sense of them another another um rabbi or another point of view you understand now the method of taking a census here described was not to be confined to this occasion but was to be followed whenever a census was decided upon yet another one came to that now these don't contradict but they do add interesting things for us to meditate and reason upon now the connection between this section and the preceding lies in the fact that the census had as its purpose the idea of atonement for the people and also the contribution of the half shekel like the atonement performed by Haron took place once took place once in the year once in the year so now you hear a lot of churches and a lot of other people in versions of, of Christianity talk about tithes and offering tithes and offering. Well, what about this right here you see because they're only picking and choosing the overseeing and, 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 and not even doing that too well. Now, the part about the plague, let's just touch on this. The part about the plague, so that no plague, so that there be no plague. Anything, anything that is numbered is, is subject to the influence of the evil eye. This is the Buddha eye. This, it has been believed. Anything that is numbered in that sense is subject to the evil eye now what do they what metal do they use against the evil eye in the dracula movie it's silver it's silver see there's more to that actually but we can see the root of it right here in scripture and it's um uh calamitous or calamitous uh consequences anything that is that is numbered you understand? Some people say, well, no, that, 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 that's not so. Well, yes, it is so. You understand? One reason why sometimes people don't keep their money in banks. Because they figure if it's numbered, then it's taxed, so forth and so on. Because if they don't know exactly the number, then it goes under the radar, so to speak. You understand? But it's interesting the connection between the, the, the numbering of and the subjection to the influence of the Buddha Ayn or the evil eye and you all should know what the Buddha Ayn is you understand the Buddha Ayn is right there on the back of the dollar now this is this is what makes it so interesting because even though we live in this economy right now you know what I'm saying this society and, and we still transact with money when you see the Hebrew system there was other currencies and before the money could actually go into the holy place devoted to the most high it had to go through a for lack of a better word like a laundering process it had to now in its proper context nothing was wrong with it but see what they was doing in the time of Yehoshua you know when they had turned the house of God into a marketplace you you understand was was wrong this is why we specified and specified once in a year there's a specific time for there's a time for everything you understand but some greedy people seeing you know what good benefits and it's just a 65 cents it's just two 
shillings, nine pence, or about three shillings, six pence. Some say, that's not too much. You know what I'm saying? Let's do that every month. You know what I'm saying? Let's do that all the time. And the people not knowing the, the hug, not knowing the law, you know what I'm saying? But being faithful and superstitious as well, but being ignorant, therefore subject to a lot much more superstition, wanting to please the Almighty, to please God. You know what I'm saying? And some dishonest, you could say, priest and 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 and, and um, like what happened with the Pharisees and and the Jewry and Judaism. You know what I'm saying? What's happening in ancient Egypt and the priesthood? You know what I'm saying? What, what's, what currently is going on in the Ethiopian Orthodoxy? You know what I'm saying? Call a spade a spade. You know what I'm saying? This is the reason why the the only mediation really between. God and man is the man Gitachin Jesus Christos. And this is why the Bible is so important. And this is why they've always um, suppressed and sought to oppress those who sought the truth for themselves. You understand? And this is one of the reasons why it's very important we take this opportunity that we have the scriptures and the ability to study these things, to really study these things for ourselves so we would know the truth. That's the only way one can live truly in a spiritually christian de democratic society you know what I'm saying? so from 20 years old the inference is that a male under 20 a male under 20 because we know ones and ones will want to know and probably ask more questions on well wh wh what's up with this 20 years old when it says 20 years old it's important for us to know that the inference is that a male under 20 was not eligible for military service and did not come within the category of man. You, you know what I mean? Of man. In other words, that connection of men and war or men and military and men in that nature that we call or people call macho or manly or fighting. You know what I'm saying? We, we need to understand and not allow this artificial virtual reality society to fool us about the real world. Because we can see a lot of these um, illusions are crumbling right before our our very eyes but now the rich and the poor since the half shekel was a ransom for a soul and before god all are equal the rich must not give more or the poor less now this sitota this offering that's mentioned at least three times verse 13 14 and 15 they refer to three different offerings there were three different offerings a, there was a compulsory levy, that's what we get Levi, levy, of a half shekel. The silver thus raised being used for casting the sockets for the tabernacle. We find that in uh, chapter 38, verse uh, 25. B, or the ha and the let now, a compulsory levy of a half shekel in the census taken after the erection of of the tabernacle according to numbers chapter 1 verse 2 now the money being spent on the purchase of communal sacrifices and materials that were needed for the tabernacle in other words what can be more democratic and or communalism you know, say that's a real christian communal judeo communal society as a, a real social system you know what I'm saying? so we hear about democracy communism and even socialism, these are not even capitalism, are not bad terminologies in and of themselves, but they have been given, they've been made like an idol based on the image of the white Western supremacy. You understand, in the Anglo American supremacy, or through a whitewash, you understand, perspective, either it's their form of democracy, while we can see democracy existing even before it was named democracy. So we have. This being alluded to here in the phrase, to make an atonement for your souls, since the sacrifices were offered to secure atonement. And now C, a voluntary contribution of no fixed amount for the material of the sanctuary. So there was a voluntary, one could voluntarily donate with no fixed amount for any materials or towards the materials of the sanctuary. Um, and we need to understand this as we talk about donation, tithes, offerings, and in doing the work of the King of Kings and His Christ. That's in Exodus 25, 
I mean 35 actually and 24 to make an atonement some would interpret it to escape perhaps the plague the Mechasephet which might otherwise be consequence or the, the sequel to the, to the census now it's often called the atonement money or the Kippurim is atonement money so described here because it served as a ransom or a kofer for a man's soul appointed for the service is for the ma gel gelia you understand it's for the service we have to infer that this census is not identical with that of numbers one and two and took place after it took place after the hot yad of the golden calf or 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 we can say the renegade uh hathor conspiracy that occurred which resulted in a plague according to um, 20, uh, 32 and 35 32 and 35 the golden calf conspiracy um, or the Hathor insurgents among the camp of the Beit Israel from the mixed multitude from this silver the sprockets were cast now as we go forward there's other elements that we would like to touch on that are very important um, as well as just put this out there so if we don't get an opportunity to touch on it in this cycle others could probably look this up for themselves and to um, get my little bit more acquainted with this we have um, what's known as the the shekel and the trinity the mystery of God as well as the shekel of the of the of the of the holy place or the shekel um, ha kodesh of the tabernacle the holy shekel there's a PDF that that's a very good PDF for others that want to get into the subject matter in a little more depth as well as we want to touch on the the shekel and the Trinity mystery of God now we already know that there were three different you know offerings three different two compulsory and one voluntary but it even goes a little bit more um, deeper or there's, there's more heights that we need to touch on but just the basics just to review right here um, ransom is a price paid for freedom you understand and the word freedom also needs to be um, defined properly because there were certain rights and responsibilities on freedom from a Hebraic perspective and the shekel or sekel which I think is very important and hopefully we'll begin a discussion about our own economy our own weights and measures as the Metaf Kedus the Bible of his imperial majesty so outlines it in order for us to establish our community and our commonwealth on much firm on the rock on the on, on firm ground so so more to come ya willing salam laku alaikum shabbat shalom send that salam sabbatical salutations and greetings